Good evening and welcome to Virginia's Views and Vibes. I'm your host, Jenny Gardner, and tonight my special guest is a businessman. He's a musician, very talented entertainer, community activist, my friend, Kevin McNamara. Kevin, thank you so much for coming out. This is my a busy pleasure, week. Jenny. I'm glad to be here. And you took time to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you do a lot of things. You, you, you businessman, uh, entrepreneur, you're an entertainer, you do lots of things, community activism. You're involved in everything that is either patriotic or just kind and responsible. So it is an honor for you to be here. It's an honor for me to have you here. Um, but we're gonna start with, you sing and you play the guitar. So we're gonna start with that and you chose the song and it's Cat Stevens, father to his son, but there's a story behind it. Would you like to tell the story first or? The story goes that um, Cat Stevens wrote a song about his dad in uh, writing the song. His father and him didn't get along that well. And it reminds me of the way I was brought up. My father did the best he could. They were the World War II uh, folks that had this one way of looking at things. And he used to say to me, Kevin, do this, do that. I never knew him because he, he, he really, he died, I went off and to the service at uh, 19 and I had kind of lo left under conditions that wasn't uh, the best, but I got drafted. And what happened was I, rem I realized when I was overseas in the military in Vietnam, how much my father meant to me. And that song came out in the 60s, in the late, early 70s maybe, 69, 70, a father to a son and I never forgot it because it talks about the father talking to the son and the son talking to the father. And they just weren't getting along. So I'll sing this song. Yeah. It's a beautiful words. Cat Stevens hits it out of the park and every time I sing it, I think of my father. So here goes. Yeah. It's not time to make a change Just sit down, take it easy You're still young, that's your fault There's so much you have to know Find a girl, settle down If you want to you can marry, look at me, I am old, but I'm happy, I was once like you, are now, and I know, it's not easy, to be fine, when you find, something going on, Take your time, think a lot, while think of everything you've got, or you will still be here tomorrow, and your dreams may not. Now the son talks to the father. How can I try to explain? When I do, you turn away the game. It's always been the same old story. From the moment I could talk, I was ordered to listen now. There's a way that I have to go away. times that I try keeping everything I knew inside it's hard it's so hard to ignore them from the moment I could talk I was ordered 
to listen now There's a way, Dad I have to go away I have to go away Bravo. Bravo. That and that beautiful. song reminds me of my father because um, I didn't have the best relationship with him. And then on my way to uh, overseas, my father was giving me a ride. And he said, uh, Kevin, you know I had to do what I had to do. There's the door, get out. And I said, Dad, I'm surprised you didn't do it sooner. <laughs> and I, w I grew up in the military. Yeah. And uh, those days, they meant a lot to me. But the way I was going in my life in Newton, my buddies in West Newton, I never thought I'd be sitting here today if I didn't go in the military. And it did have a, a very much an effect on my life and a lot of the guys I was in, because we were drafted, some out of college, some out of their jobs, some out, whatever. But uh, it was a very tense time. And I, I, I brought my flag here yeah. because um, yeah. we, we belong to the Post 440, the Sons of the American Legion here in Newton. Very good uh, organization, and if you're of uh, mine, call me up. I have a little beauty shop in Avondale, Kevin Max Hair Design, and I'll get you in the right people, and we'll get you uh, a part of it. All you need is somebody in the family that was in the military all the way back to the First World War. That's right. But this flag means a lot to me. It's a three-by-five flag that we put 188 flags on the bridges in Newton. And we put them on, we put four on each side of the bridges. Thank you. And when we do, <laughs> up, there you go. they mean a lot. And a lot of times, Denny, I find that some people steal them, some people light them on fire, and some people slice them up. And what I'd like to say to those people, you come with me to the veterans hospital yeah. and tell those, if I catch them, yeah. tell those to those military men that are in there why you did that. And one of the reasons is, uh, it seems like in the last 20, 30 years, the indoctrination of thoughts yeah. of children in school coming out, they don't have that, whatever it is, esprit de corps, to uh, love the country and love the flag and love what it stands for. In Vietnam, we used to see it shot up and we'd go to put it back up on the flagpole. And again, I wasn't a rah rah ziskumba when I got out, even out of the service. But I feel like uh, as I get older and see my family and my grandchildren, I want them to understand that this country isn't free. Nothing's free. And the way we uh, conduct our behavior throughout the world, America is the shining light on the, the hill. And I still believe it through every election. You, you know, everybody gets a little out of sight when they have these elections. But four years, gang, you can change it if you want we still have the best op opportunity to do these things. You know, it's, it's funny you mention that because, you know, as kids growing up, we all grew up in, in these little, little small towns. Newton, when we came here, when I came, uh, I was born here, but when we moved to Aubindale, um, it was this little, little small town. And I want my grandkids to have that same feeling about where they live. Maybe not the small town like we had, it's certainly not with social media and the games that they just put in front of them and all of that. I, I, but I want them to have the same feeling that um, they're safe here, they're safe in this country. And they're safe for a reason. The police, the fire, a military. Um, I traveled, I didn't travel out of the country until I think I was about 19. And the same thing, I had gone to Spain, and then we went over to some island that they said was Africa, who knows. I was young, and I looked for the flag. Even at that young age, I looked for the flag and I felt, okay, we're safe. I want them to have that feeling. I don't want them to hate. Sure, everything's not perfect here, but it's, close, it's about as close to perfect as you can get. Yes. When you can pick up 
you know, the phone, call someone, call a radio station, and say your piece and you're not arrested when you hang up. Yes. Speaks a lot, speaks volumes. Uh, social media has changed uh, the climate of yeah. youth, uh, whether it be in school, whether uh, doing your work on the computer. Um, the things we had to do, we had to go do research yeah. on our papers and so forth, if you were in school. And at a certain age, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, the small areas of Newton, where this, the innocence of the, the time, yeah. uh, and now things become wealthy, and wealth begets more wealth. Uh, we didn't have the wealth. No. We had uh, moments where we played and enjoyed uh, the, the city and the, the time that we had allotted to us after school. Uh, and it was great. It was great to yeah. grow up in a city like Newton. Uh, we were in West Newton. You could have been in Newton Center or Newton Corner. And it's like going on a safari to get to these places. Yeah. <laughs> and if you went over there, I was a firefighter for a while. And they sent me out to, uh, out to Engine 10, which was up on Dedham Street. And I had Dedham Street. Years ago, at some, I have a beauty shop. And some of the people I used to do, they'd be 130 now. Um, they used to work <laughs> in farms up there. Yes. Uh, the That's the, right. The different farms. Yes. And they milked cows before they went to work or went to school. <laughs> So, I mean, that's the, that was Newton, and I'm still alive to remember it. Uh, but uh, the music was something. I remember in Vietnam, we used to listen to all this kind of music. Uh, it was anti-war, anti-war. And when I came home from the service, I didn't really care about politics. All that. I just wanted to get home yeah. to my family. Was your dad alive when you came home? He died two weeks after I walked in the door. Oh, wow. Uh, and my mother died a week after that. And I remember we had a 10-year-old sister, and I don't want, you know, none of this. People had to realize that that was a sad time in our life. But everybody has a sad time. Just look at the news. Look at yes. what's going on around the world. Yeah. You, you prevail, you, you rise above it, and you move on. And my brother Ray, who was a firefighter, he kept telling me to take the police and fire exams. And it was at the time you could make a living off those p police and fire. Yeah. You could go to school in the GI Bill. I went nights. And my issue was I could buy a house on a fireman's pay. And I married a woman that's a nurse. Yeah. And on those days, you could buy a house for $35,000. That's right. In Newton. Yes. Two family. And get rent. <laughs> <laughs> but you have, um, you know, Vietnam, uh, you, you, were in, you were in the, uh, you were at the line of fire. I mean, you, you, you fought I was war. in a base camp called Lai Kê. In Lai Kê, we used to do Morse code. And we'd do this information that we'd put it on teletype and we give it into the intelligence, and they do what they want to do. What happened was, I was very, very fortunate because my job kept me contained in the base camp. Wow. I didn't have to go out looking for the Viet Cong. They came occasionally looking for us. Yeah. But I'll tell you, um, I'm looking around the world. Sometimes I'm glued to the TV on what's going on in Ukraine and uh, Israel. And I, I, I feel like as some of the children that we go into the schools because of the uh, the veterans group that we belong to in the American Legion, we have our moments where we go into All-American Day, we go into the uh, Memorial Day, Veterans Day, we go in and we speak to the kids in the high schools, Newton North and Newton South. We try to make them realize that, you know, again, uh, freedom is not free. Right. And a lot of these children, they have questions, we have Q&A after. We have veterans that come in and speak to the children. It's a very, very important part of uh, high school. Because uh, junior high, I get it. But high school, you can be drafted if you're 18 or 19. And I was 19 when I graduated high school. Yeah. I had stayed back one year yeah. when I went from parochial to regular. <laughs> Maybe I don't transition. know what that was all about. <laughs> I, I love the All-American Day that we do at Newton North and Newton South. And all the American Legion, American Legion Auxiliary and the Sons of the American Legion. We all participate in it. And my part is um, the missing man table. Yes. We, um, we, uh, my husband and I brought that to um, Wayland, uh, Newton, and someplace in New Hampshire. We do the portable, moving, mobile w missing man. Yes. And when I read what that stands for, I'm always shocked to see some of these kids focus on my every word. They're, they're like sponges, they absorb it. What I'm saying, and they don't, they're not messing around, they're not sitting there looking at their phone. We have their undivided attention. 
And I have yet to be to one where someone hasn't come up, one of the students, and asked more about it, asked to see it. And I know they come and ask you questions, too. You do. It, it gives me hope. It, it really um, does. It gives me hope. Jeannie, when I, when I, what you just uh, pointed out, can you imagine a mother or a father having a child in an environment with a combat environment and sleeping at nighttime, worrying and praying to God that your children will come home safe? Yeah and you have the MIA, and you have the missing man table. And these children that do come up and they ask questions, it's serious, folks. It's, these children, of, uh, they're 14, 15, they come up into the high school. Yeah. We set it up, Ginny sets it up. Uh, we have the pictures of the, uh, the, the names, the, the, of, uh, the names of the uh, deceased in Newton from uh, the, the different wars. And it, it's, we're not warmongers. We just want to let people know that this is the other side that keeps people safe. Remember, there's about 3,500, 35, 3,500 people under arms to protect the world. Yeah. We have technology that is uh, highly sophisticated. We have what's going on in Ukraine and Israel and so forth, and that can escalate. And let's hope that we can diminish that escalation by not having to worry about a parent lying in bed at night worrying about right. their children in a far off country that you can't even find certain areas on a map. Yeah. We were young with the Cuban Missile Crisis. Mm -hmm. I, I own, the thing I remember about it was when it ended, I was at the birth school on Ash Street and the fire department was behind mm -hmm. us. And every Friday at uh, noon time, they'd sound that alarm and we had to, this was supposed to protect us, you know what I'm gonna say? You had to get under your desk and kind of cover your head. Yeah. That was how, um, after the Cuban Missile Crisis, how we went forward to protect ourselves. But the thing, I, I, I read about that because I was young, and I read about it as I got older, and the thing that impresses me the most, that I, I kind of feel maybe we don't have it today, is Nikita Khrushchev and uh, John F. Kennedy did not want war. They wanted to solve this diplomatically, and they spent, I think it was 12 days, t s trying to solve this, not go to war, to the point that they even named the um, quarantine, which was a national fact, a blockade yes. to Cuba. They, they didn't call it a blockade because calling it a blockade would have meant war. And I, I wish that now going forward, and I pray, and, I, and I'm optimistic, that our president on January um, 26, 6 or 26 20th. now? 20th. 20th. Yeah. I was right in between. Um, we'll, we'll use diplomacy and, and stop these, the, this World War III that's, yeah. that could approach. Um, but then, that's what I'm gonna talk about for uh, politics a little bit, because I want you to tell a funny story. When you were in Vietnam, you were sitting on a, um, a, a tank I was sitting in a bunker about something. my brother. Yes. My you brother have Robin to tell was this. in Hare on Broadway. Yeah. He was the leader of Hare on Broadway for three years. Um, and as I was, when I was away in the service, my brother sang a song called Lay a Little Love on Me. Lay a Little Love on Me. So uh, I knew that was out. And in 1970, I was in a, a bunker with a, a weapon and so forth, and we we're looking out over the fields. And we had a little transistor radio, remember those? Yeah. And the transistor radio, we had one <laughs> station in Vietnam. It was called the Armed Forces Radio Station. Pat Anybody Sajak. Anybody who was there remembers it because yep. that was the only station. Yeah, Pat Sajak, right? Pat Sajak, well, I was going to get to that. But, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go um, ahead. <laughs> so Robin had a song called Lay a Little Love on Me. It was a high-pitched, if you listen to the Bee Gees, they have a high-pitched sound. So the... This jockey said, doesn't she have a good voice after the song was over? And I said, what? That's my brother from Boston. <laughs> so I, I was working with communications. So I was able to call to a place called Fuloy, and they patched me through to Saigon. And I said, can I speak to the head DJ that just um, explained that song as a female singing that song? That it's my brother. So oh, they will patch you. We'll get you right through. So the fella answered, he said, hi, I'm the DJ that said it. It was the lead DJ, a head DJ. It was Pat Sajak from A Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> he was the head DJ from 69 to 70 
on the Armed Forces radio station. And I was so proud. And he said out over the air, I'm very apologetic. The brother of that uh, singer is in Lai Kae uh, in Three Corps in Vietnam. And you folks that are, were <laughs> over there, you know what I'm talking about. It was outside about 30 miles west of uh, Saigon. And it was a beautiful part of the world, believe it or not, but yes. there was a lot of interesting stuff yeah. going on. Yeah, um, and that would have been, and, and you mentioned, tra again, transistor radio. That time, we lived with our transistor yeah, radio, yeah. And, and there was no replay of the song. No. You had to wait for it to come yeah. on again, yeah, you know. and it wasn't, you know, what we have now. My gosh, the technology, but <laughs> interesting time, interesting time. Yeah. To, um, but I want to read something else up. You mentioned the uh, Post 440, American Legion, SALS and the American Legion Auxiliary. One thing, we, we go, go, go all year long. We do a December, oh, I'm gonna miss the date, 19th. We're doing the, 19th, the gift we're card party. Yep. party. And to come, we have great entertainers. Kevin will sing for a little bit. At the Post 440. Post 295 yep. California Street. Yep. And we'll have something to eat. It's always delicious. Kevin will sing. You'll get to hear um, the La La's. If you've never heard them, um, you're in for a treat. It's like the Supremes. <laughs> Diana Ross and the Supremes. Diana Ross and the Supremes. Okay, we'll, we'll go with yep, that. Yep, That's yep. our story. We'll stick into it. And then um, to get in, you bring a $25. You can't bring, if you want to donate more, you have to get individual gift cards. 25 each, and that's your admission in. And on Christmas morning, um, this tradition that was actually started by the Newton Republican Party, by the way, Tom Mountain, Oral Mountain, Sandy Young, Larry Young, Margot Weinstein. Mm -hmm. They started this and then we, we kind of jumped in and said, we'd love to be in it with you and, it, and it's grown. So we go to a home, veterans homeless shelter and we bring the gift cards, give them out. And Kevin's there and that was granddaughter and the Lala's and we all sing and even the guys sing and we give out those $25 gift cards, and it's the highlight of my Christmas. That area really that Junie's talking about is a hotel yeah. that was retrofitted on Court Street down in downtown Boston near um, the, the uh, City Hall and so forth. Uh, you get a feeling of not only satisfaction, but you're giving back something, as Junie explained, that we give out gift cards. But then we have a, a sing-along and they can sing uh, whatever. And it's about an hour and a half, and it's Christmas morning. Yeah. And boy, you feel like you've given back to something or somebody. Um, and the folks, the, the auxiliary, <laughs> the, the SAL, uh, Sons of the American League, we're all there to give our time to these uh, people that are beaten up by the war. They don't have any places to go other than that. Yeah. And the, it's like the angels have come in and help these people yeah. have a bed, a uh, warm meal, and a shower. Yeah. And think of yourself in the, uh, that situation. And uh, we're lucky, we're just lucky. Yeah, we, I, I, I love doing it. And we did something in the summer, it was the boat down the-, the boat, um, Yeah, the, the, the boat ride, boat down, ride. down the Charles that River. That was fun too, you sang- To the Watertown Yacht Club. Yep, and um, uh, Nick, three boat uh, Pascarosa. Ride. Yep, that was Nick Pasquarosa, and he organized it. We had a lot of volunteers, same thing that day. Lots of volunteers. We did some singing, and the the two gentlemen that were on the boat with, with me and Nick, um, they just, once we started listening to him, they just wanted to talk with us. Just, they, were, they had my undivided attention. Mm -hmm. They crave it, and then one, one older gentleman said, I think I remember you. This is a compliment of my life. My, my sister's probably at home rolling. But um, you sang last year at our, at our Christmas gift card party. And we loved hearing you. And I thought, well, my kids never let me sing in <laughs> church. And no one else thinks I can sing. So thank you so much. <laughs> it was a riot. It and was a ride. So pre appreciative, too. They Jenny, really I'm, I, I find that uh, <laughs> when you sit and go home after work and you sit on your couch and you just watch TV or whatever, there's sometimes you can find time to give a little bit of time yeah. to some cause or some event that it just makes you feel a little bit better. Yeah. Um, giving back. And giving something back to yourself because 
You know, I'm in my 70s now and I look at my grandchildren and I'm constantly explaining to them about how beautiful the country is and yeah. what it means. And, and it, it makes me feel good that they all, uh, they're involved now. My, my grandson just joined uh, the, uh, the Veterans of Foreign Wars in uh, New Jersey. Really? And he's 14 years old. Oh my gosh. I mean, he's, uh, I was surprised to hear that. So wow. it rubs off. It does. And it's just rub a little off. bit of patriotism. It, it does rub off. Now, my grandson, Lucas, is 11, and he's been doing, leading the pledge for our 9 11 memorial every, every September. Mm -hmm. I think he's on to four years, and he loves it. Yeah. He loves it. And um, I love seeing that. And my older grandson, too, a um, little bit conservative, and and he gets it. You know, you don't have to be extreme one way or the other, but if we have them in the middle, they respect the country, they respect the president, no matter who, is, who or she, you know, whether male or female, they respect the country, they respect that, and believing that maybe they're all trying to do their best for the country mm -hmm. and keep us out of World War III, I think yeah. we've, we've done our job, and the parents sure have, and with, um, Two minutes left. Um, any other song that hits you when you sing it? Song that I sing? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you could, with two minutes, you could sing us out. <laughs> Only child alone in wild cabinet maker's son. Hands were made for different things, his heart was known to none. Lost his way and went alone on his tarry way. He gave to me a gift I know ever can repay. Mild man of music denied a gentle faith. Tried to be a soldier, but his music wouldn't wait. Lost his way and went alone on his tarry way. His gentle means of sculpting souls took him years to understand. Leader of the band is tired, his eyes are growing old. But his love runs through my instrument, his heart is in my soul. I'm just a poor attempt to imitate my dad. I'm just a living legacy to the leader of the band. Thank you for the music and the stories on the road, Dad. Thank you for the freedom when it came my time to go. Thank you for your kindness in the times when you got tough. And Papa, I don't think I said I love you near enough. Leader of the band is tired, his eyes are growing old, but his love runs through my instrument, his heart is in my soul. I'm just a poor attempt to imitate my dad, I'm just a living legacy to the leader of the band.